Now, from WYDC-TV, this is Big Fox News at 10. We begin tonight in Mansfield, where businesses can now operate at 100%. This week, Pennsylvania stopped its capacity restrictions. Big Fox's Matt Kleindienst spoke with the manager at one business and some residents who are all happy about the change. Good evening, and businesses throughout the Commonwealth can welcome in anybody without having to worry about capacity limits. Residents and workers I spoke with told me the move was a long time coming. I think it's time that the restrictions were lifted. Today, Papa V's Pizzeria and other Mansfield businesses opened its doors with a sense of ease. Yesterday, Governor Tom Wolf followed through on his promise and lifted all capacity limits on businesses. Manager Rob Knowlton believes business at Papa V's will continue to pick up now that restrictions are fully lifted. People want to get out and people have money to spend. We'll be able to get 100% seating capacity again, which again will help our business a lot. Chris Vaughn says he's glad that businesses no longer have to worry about turning potential customers away. I know sometimes you walk in, you see a restaurant that was almost empty, but yet they couldn't seat anybody else because uh, they had already met their limit as to whatever it was at that time. And while the pandemic is still ongoing, Vaughn says the easing of restrictions signals that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. You can be walking around and you actually forget that uh, 2020 and the first part of 2021 actually existed. A lot of people have been vaccinated. A lot of people aren't wearing masks now because of that. And I just think it's great that it's moving back toward that. Masks will still be required for unvaccinated Pennsylvanians until June 28th. Matt Kleindens, Big Fox, WYDC in Corning. No more COVID curfews. New York City following a national trend, dropping COVID restrictions as vaccinations increase. Jonathan Sari has more. The city that never sleeps is back in business. New York lifting the midnight curfew on bars and restaurants, one of the last major COVID restrictions still in place in the former epicenter of the outbreak. More than 63% of American adults are now at least partially vaccinated, and businesses say they're happy to open their doors again. We're closer than ever to giving COVID the curtain hook. Get out of here, COVID. We're back. While cases are down nationwide, they're still spiking in some areas like Washington State, where they're up 73 percent, leading to concerns about how to stop another nationwide surge. The Equal Employment Opportunity Commission says employers can require workers to get vaccinated before returning to the job, prompting complaints from some legal experts. I have been vaccinated. That was my choice. But no one should have to give up their right to privacy. But those concerns are not stopping folks from getting out and about. The TSA reporting almost 2 million passengers a day over the holiday weekend, six times more than last year, but still 24 percent below pre-pandemic levels. Still, it is a good indicator that Americans are ready to turn the corner on COVID. Can it happen again? You know, so until that day comes, we're going to Enjoy life the best we can. And as the summer movie season heats up, theater chains, AMC, Cinemark, and Regal are all dropping their face mask requirements. In Atlanta, Jonathan Seri, Fox News. The 171 Cedar Arts Center is hosting its annual Kaleidoscope fundraiser this Thursday. The event will be held virtually and will feature live musical acts and an online auction. Attendees can bid on luxury travel packages, workshops, and gift baskets. All proceeds support the 171 Cedar Art Center's programs. Tickets for the live stream are $50 and can be purchased on their website. New York police have arrested a man accused of punching an Asian woman in Chinatown. The sudden attack was caught on camera and a warning, it is hard to watch. Now investigators are recommending a hate crime charge. John Diaz reports. It's disturbing video, an Asian-American woman walking innocently Monday night when without reason, 48-year-old Alexander Wright punches her right in her face. So hard, she falls to the ground outside a restaurant on Bayard Street in Chinatown. My first thought was definitely wondering whether or not she was okay. Um, I was relieved to see that some people did go and uh, rush to her aid. The 55-year-old woman was treated at a nearby hospital and will be okay. Local leaders say even though the assault is horrifying, it's important to see, to witness the growing number of attacks on Asian Americans in New York City. Assemblywoman Yulee New represents the district where this latest attack went down. I can 
you know, not understand why people can't just see that we are also human. She says it's heartbreaking and traumatic for her community. The NYPD Hate Crimes Task Force is looking into the assaults. When people hurt us, that it causes permanent trauma and that our communities are just as uh, worthy to be able to live and work and be. The fence outside the King Supers in Boulder, Colorado has grown into a memorial that is home to thousands of items that have been left there since a shooting at the store in March left 10 people dead. Starting this week, the Museum of Boulder will preserve as many items as possible. Mark Salinger shows us the wall has become part of the history of Boulder. It started as a fence surrounding a tragedy. It just very quickly became a site of sort of communal mourning and grief, um, but also reflection and healing. The flowers, the notes, the faces. Things like this are left by kids um, are really, really powerful. And the names, the names of the 10 lives lost on March 22nd. It really feels like a privilege to be taking care of the stories like this. It's Chelsea Pennington Hahn's job to make sure the wall is remembered. Yep. Even after it's taken down this week. When the shooting happened, we you know knew really quickly that this was a part of Boulder's history. And Pennington so, Hahn is the curator of collections for the Museum of Boulder. She watched down the wall, preserving the items left so by the community. Basically everything we can will save. Nearly every day since that horrific afternoon in a grocery store parking lot turned into a memorial. You see the outpouring of their grief, of their, you know, their wishes for change. Um, it's just such a, a raw sight of, of that emotion. The items left on the wall will be preserved by the museum and eventually displayed to the public. And there's a huge, like, range of objects and type of things. And so they so, left a sort of child um, um, shopping cart with flowers and then... Yeah, I'd imagine this is, yeah, Officer Tally. For more than two months, um, the wall has helped the town heal. You know, it's devastating, but it's it's still important to preserve it. We can't just ignore it and, you know, wish that it never happened and not think about it. It's still important to tell that story. Now, it will forever be a part of what makes Boulder, Boulder. President Joe Biden in Oklahoma today to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the Tulsa Race Massacre. But even a century later, the racial divide in our country still runs deep. Britt Conway has a look back at what happened through the eyes of one of the last remaining survivors and a look ahead at the battle over reparations. Greenwood, Oklahoma, 1921, a vibrant, affluent city within a city in North Tulsa, home to more than 300 Black-owned businesses, where entrepreneurs, art, and culture flourished. It became known as Black Wall Street. Now, it's known as the site of a horrific massacre. Viola Fletcher was just seven years old then. They were killing people and burning houses. We could see people running and people laying on the ground, probably bleeding from being shot and killed. As many as 300 were killed. Smell smoke with houses burning. A community burned to the ground, 35 city blocks destroyed, 10,000 black Tulsans left homeless. For decades, there have been calls for reparations. The generational wealth that you have today, the land that you have today, uh, all of that began with all that destruction. But now, with Democrats controlling the U.S. House and Senate, a renewed hope. And Monday, President Joe Biden said, the federal government must reckon with and acknowledge the role that it has played in stripping wealth and opportunity from black communities. Half a city block is all that's left of Greenwood now, and it's mostly white owned. But for Viola, the loss, the fear remain. I'm afraid that something like that might happen again. I'm Britt Conway reporting. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce says it is making a big push to address the worker shortage in the U.S. Monday, the business lobbying group announced its America Works initiative. The nationwide campaign is aimed at working with businesses and the government to address the shortage. According to the chamber, the U.S. had a record 8.1 million job openings as of March. The group says its initiative will make several efforts to turn the job market around. That includes pushing for investments in workforce training programs, expansions in child care access, and the second chance hiring, which works to employ those with a criminal record, and reforms to the nation's immigration laws.
A major pharmaceutical company will not get to plead its case before the highest court in the land. Today, the U.S. Supreme Court said it will not review a $2 billion verdict against Johnson & Johnson. The company requested the review after a lower court sided with a group of women who sued J&J. &J. The women said exposure to asbestos in Johnson & Johnson's talcum powder led to them developing ovarian cancer. Still ahead tonight, as Americans emerge from pandemic isolation, the U.S. Surgeon General says there's a new epidemic we must now address, loneliness. That loneliness is that it's linked uh, to not only increases in depression and anxiety, but to uh, you know, shorter lifespans, to an increase in premature death. We take a deeper look into how loneliness can affect our mental health. Here's your local stock market update from Big Fox. Now, your Twin Tiers forecast from Big Fox. Tonight's Big Fox forecast is brought to you by William Matar. Good evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Kim Walker with your weather update. We do have chances of rain returning, and there will be some showers likely by the end of the day tomorrow, and more chances of rain for the end of the week. There will be some sunshine as we move into the weekend. However, with the sunshine returning, it is going to get quite hot. In fact, it will be unseasonably warm by the end of the weekend and into early next week. But for tomorrow, we're going to see more seasonable temperatures, but increasing humidity as high pressure system that's been sitting on us will continue to move toward the Atlantic. This will send a cold front into our area, and there will be a few showers and thunderstorms during the day, especially in the afternoon hours into the evening. So here's a look at your hour to hour planner. We are expecting off and on showers, not only for the morning, but also into the afternoon. There could be an isolated thunderstorm as well. Well, by 8 o'clock, readings will be around 60 degrees. Our average lows are in the 40s, so we're going to start off pretty warm. 68 by 10 and then 71 degrees at 2 o'clock. And as we head into the afternoon, those temperatures will drop a little bit into the upper 60s with the possibility of some rain. So it looks like tomorrow is going to be a little bit cooler than it will be today. However, it's going to be very seasonable for the upcoming days. And then we have a trough of low pressure that will start to sink southward, and this will allow for a little bit cooler air for your Thursday and Friday. There will be chances of rain. Of course, that will make things a little bit on the cool side, and there could be a few thunderstorms as well. There's the threat of severe weather, I think, just mainly to our east and southeast. For our area, there could be a strong thunderstorm, but overall, I don't think we have the risk of severe weather at this time. So, looking at your future radar, there could be an icy shower or two in Pennsylvania as we start off the morning, and then the shower activity will start to increase from the south to the north by 1 o'clock in the afternoon afternoon tomorrow. It looks like most of us will be in on the action and then most of this will start to taper off in the evening hours. There could be one or two thunderstorms that pop up and it will bring some moderate rain to uh, places like Corning and Elmira. And then early on Thursday, things will start to dry out. Maybe a stray shower or two, but the activity starts to pick up late in the morning into the afternoon and into the evening hours. So our chances of rain will be ongoing as well on your Friday, starting off on the drier side, but then rain chances again will start to increase in the late morning into the afternoon and possibly lasting through the evening hours as well. So here's a look at your forecast tonight. Expect some patchy clouds. I'm expecting it to be rain free with lows in the upper 40s. Highs tomorrow will be in the low 70s, so it's going to be a cool day and then 78 degrees on your Friday with the possibility of an afternoon shower or two. Getting pretty hot with highs around 90 degrees by Sunday. As Americans emerge from pandemic isolation, the U.S. Surgeon General says there's another epidemic we must address, loneliness. Mandy Gaither has more on how this affects our mental health in today's Health Minute. From the pandemic, Bye. Bye. 
<laughs> to xenophobia and racial injustice, the past year has been hard on many. Trauma, whether it's physical trauma or emotional trauma, has an impact on our overall health. As more Americans emerge from isolation, U.S. Surgeon General Dr. Vivek Murthy says we need to address a new epidemic, loneliness. You may have been discriminated against based on the color of your skin or based on the fact that you uh, have a name that sounds different from others or maybe that you have an accent that sounds a bit different. But those moments are, uh, you know, are moments where we, again, we tell people that they don't belong. And that has a very powerful effect you know, on our cohesion as communities is an impact on people's uh, mental health. Everyone has a different response to trauma. Dr. Murthy says some reach out, others isolate. That loneliness is that it's linked uh, to not only increases in depression and anxiety, but to uh, you know, shorter lifespans, to an increase in premature death, to increase incidence of dementia, to sleep disturbances, and so many other conditions. But Dr. Murthy says it's our relationships with others that have the power to heal. We are all healers in that respect. And this is a time, I think, when deep healing is needed. And if we can get people to see themselves as agents of that healing through the power of their relationship, uh, then I think we have a good shot, really, at addressing some of the deep trauma that so many people have experienced in our country. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. A young woman's health issues make it impossible for her to attend her high school graduation. So the Fayetteville area community brought the celebration to her. Joe Fisher has the story. They came by the hundreds, <laughs> hollering and honking <laughs> to honor a member of this year's graduating class. She loves loud vehicles and there was a lot of them. 19 year old Leanna Smith has autism and Down syndrome and is nonverbal. She's had to overcome so much. Unable to wear a face mask, Leanna couldn't participate in Cape Fear High School's graduation. That's when her mom posted to Facebook. I wanted the community to come together to celebrate Leanna because she's often overlooked. That initial Facebook post about a drive through graduation really did not get all that much attention. But when Terry Cavalier posted again, this time expressing her disappointment, well, people took notice. She deserved just as much as any other kid deserved. She did. She did. And she graduated. Robert Kitchen helped spread the word and on Sunday, they came. It's wild how mean the world could be and one angel brought us all together. Firefighters, troopers, teachers, bikers, even strangers. About 750 cars came for Leanna. Everybody's hearts opened up. You know, it's like God was telling everybody, open your hearts, come together, let's do this. There was many times I had to choke back tears just because it was special and it was wonderful to see that it was laid on so many people's hearts to show up like they did. A community celebrating a major milestone and hopefully inspiring a new wave of kindness. Maybe this will touch them in the special way that they need to be a giving person too. Memorial Day weekend marked the unofficial start to the summer travel season. And we're seeing more and more Americans traveling, celebrating, and spending money. And experts say that not only marks a return to normal, but a massive summer season ahead. Mary Maloney has more. Get ready for a hot vac summer. As more Americans get vaccinated, they're going on vacation, dining out, and spending that cash. All signs that summer is returning to normal. This summer and then on into 2022, our travel bookings are already really robust. Here's the first sign. Flight fares are flying high. According to the country's major airlines, airfare costs are near or even above pre-pandemic levels. And experts say the pent-up demand is driving up the costs. Pack your patience because airports are going to be more crowded and you're going to be there with travelers who maybe haven't traveled in a year, so they're a little rusty, so the TSA lines might be a little long and a little slow. Sign number two, people are headed back to restaurants. According to data from Open Table's reservations platform, the percentage of seated customers at U.S. restaurants open for reservations is hovering just below pre-pandemic levels. People wait two and a half, three hours to eat here, and it's it's nice that people want to come see us again and wait that long to enjoy food with us. And three, happy hour is back. 
Alcohol sales are leveling off after an explosive 2020, but people are still drinking with experts predicting hard liquors, spiked seltzers and champagne will be this summer's most popular beverages. Number four, people are dressing up. Chains like H&M, Anthropology, and Macy's say demand for dresses has increased. Government retail sales numbers from March show an 18.3% jump in clothing sales from the previous month. And finally, concerts are back. Lollapalooza, the Chicago-based music festival, is returning this summer at full capacity. It's one of several multi-day festivals making a comeback this summer after being canceled last year due to the pandemic. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mary Maloney. A robotic arm outside of the International Space Station was apparently hit by space junk. The impact punched a hole in Canadarm2. The Canadian Space Agency says it's still functioning. Teams from the Canadian Agency and NASA first noticed the damage during a routine inspection on May 12th. It's unclear what hit the arm, but it could have been any type of small orbital debris, including pieces of rock, micrometeorites, dust particles, even flecks of paint that chip off of satellites. Wow. An ocean-sized odyssey is underway as a solo kayaker embarks on a month-long journey across the Pacific. Jeremy Roth has more in today's Take a Look at This. 2,400 miles. That's the length of the treacherous task ahead of solo kayaker Cyril Deramo, who set off from San Francisco and will attempt to paddle his kayak across the Pacific Ocean all the way to Hawaii. Friends and family gathered to see him off on the voyage, which is expected to take the 44-year-old around two months to complete. I'm prepared. I feel serene. I feel ready. I've been waiting for this day and uh, conditions are perf perfect. If completed, Deramo's feat will be only the second ever of its kind for this stretch of the Pacific. In 1987, kayaker Ed Gillette completed the mega crossing in 64 days. Deramo's vessel is loaded with supplies and high-tech communications gear and is designed to protect him in the event of rough weather. He's sure to keep a weather eye on the horizon as he attempts to paddle his way into the history books. I love it. I love it. I live for this. From a lengthy fantastic voyage to a short and strange trip for one small airplane that made an emergency landing on a busy California freeway. A student pilot and instructor were on board the single engine Cessna when it landed on the 101 freeway, creating a major traffic backup. No injuries were reported and the plane appeared intact as it was removed from the roadway. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. We want to leave you with a smile tonight. A lawyer was sworn into the State Bar of Michigan in the same courtroom he stood in 16 years ago when he pleaded guilty to selling and manufacturing crack cocaine. At 27 years old, Edward Martell thought he would be facing 20 years in prison. Instead, he got three years probation and one of the most important lessons of his life. Judge Bruce Morrow, presiding over his case, told Martell he had greatness within him and challenged him to become the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. After that, Martell became a regular visitor in Morrow's courtroom. Together, they spent hours talking and learning from each other. Now at 43 years old, Martell, a father of four, is starting a new chapter of his life as a criminal defense attorney. That is a fantastic story. Good luck to him. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a good night, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.